Yeah. But hey, folks, a little shock value time. It is Pacific Ocean Asia with. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have an old friend. Once upon a time, there was a gentleman on the YouTubes who went by Pacific Ocean Asia. Or Pacific Ocean Liner, which was the name that I found him under. And while he was uh, making his content under this name, I started a small series about three years ago <laughs> called The Sinking of Pacific Ocean Liner. And he's back. He hath returned mythically as though one of Cthulhu's beasts from the sea uh, he's risen again with his shiny giant chain and all and before we play any video games today uh, we're going to remember a beautiful time in YouTube history where this man this man ran away he's back now let's let's be clear he's wholly back he's got all kinds of shit and lucky for us he was smart enough uh, to do us all a favor and disable the comments on the videos. So lucky for us, um, he will, uh, he will never know unless someone finds some way to directly contact him that indeed he has been discovered again. And I have to say, I'm a little bit excited and in the tradition I'm gonna do it in the way that I've always done it, which is to essentially just, just play his video and giggle at it a bit. So that's the plan. Uh, instead of my usual uh, setup as I had before, which was uh, beer and a bowl, today I just have tea, because it's entirely too early to consider a beer. Shall we begin? Uh, beer is for breakfast, if you're very strong. Uh, I'm aging rapidly, so my strength is depleting, and I can't guarantee that beer for breakfast would function for me. Is everyone ready? Are the seatbelts fastened? Are we buckled in? We'll be playing uh, uh, Cook, Serve, and all that fun shit in just a minute. I just have to start here. Well, hey, folks. A little shock value time. It is Pacific Ocean Asia with... That is his main skill, to be fair. Shock value. I mean, just look. Just look at this. Notice he's got it a... Is. Oh, notice he's got a poster in the background. Uh, for, it looks like, Singapore? Indonesia? Hard to say. Somewhere in Southeast Asia, for sure. Shaggy mop cut off in its entirety. Oh yeah. Okay, fuck it. Before we get to that, let's go back here. You see, you see how he's back to his old clean-shaven, pseudo-schizophrenic, institutional-looking self. Well, once during his, well, during the hiatus I took from looking him up, uh, he was like this. He did this to himself and wandered around like this. So when he refers to the shaggy mop look he had going, uh, for a while he had boy bangs. And that was fine. That's a thing Whoa. you can legally do as a human, uh, as an adult male. That's a, a legal allowance that we have instilled. But now he's back to looking like someone who recently escaped a mental institution. So there's that uh, on the plus side of things. There's a woman at work that gave me so much flack about it. Always a woman at work. Note that this is this is a pattern that's ever changing. Not why does he wear his bike chain? Because he's insane, friend. Because he's insane. The romantic interest tends to be an alpha female that's always seeking attention. Fucking alpha bitches, dude. You can't trust them. I told my hairstylist, bag that hair up. Hold up. Hold up. We're 24 seconds in and already. You did this with a hairstylist? There was a there was a stylist involved in, in any capacity at any point during the creation of your mop head? Or, or this buzz cut that would require absolutely nothing but for you to run, run clippers over your head? Or? And when I'm done, give it to me, please. Ooh. And I tied up the little bag and I dropped it in her chair when I came in yesterday before I had to run out. And we're going to talk about this video, what I had to do after that. <laughs> That is not the behavior of a normal or sane individual. He just said he shaved his head, put it in a bag, and went to the employee he worked with that I guess had been talking shit about his hair and dumped it into her chair. This is not the behavior of a normal adult human, friend. <clears throat> she was out driving her bus and I told her friend at the table, I said, tell her this fur, tell her it's a present from Pacific. And when she opens it, she'll go, oh my gosh, he cut it. 
I really hope that he says this to people. That would be like me going out into the meat world, if you will, and being like, Say this is from Hagbard. No one should- I really hope he used his legal name and didn't- didn't call himself Pacific in the moment. That's terrifying. She came in and saw it, and when I walked in the door, everybody's like, Oh my gosh! One guy thought I was a new employee until he- I talked, and he says, Are you serious? Oh my gosh, why did you go so extreme? Oh, so these are new employees that don't know you and don't know how extreme you always go. Welcome to Pacific Ocean Asia, where everything tends to be oh. extreme. Christ, he's gotten self-aware in three years. That's going to make my job harder. So, yesterday was National Walkout Day. Walkout Day. <laughs> to Spotlight Denver, Colorado, we had multiple high schools engage in walkouts. <clears throat> he is clearly against the walkouts. <clears throat> Signs were made protesting the NRA, abolish the NRA, and me, who's politically conservative and doesn't, is not a member of the NRA, I su fully support the NRA in their their organization and what they're trying to do. Well, I, you wanted to see his eyes, uh, Hitlock, so there you go. I am not an enemy of the NRA by any stretch. You can see his beautiful eyes now. Actually, here, let's crank this and see, is that as high as it goes? Yeah, that's as good as it gets. So somehow he still records everything he does in the lowest possible resolution. Good. I Good. was shocked once again that what has become a pattern in Denver and what has become a standard MO is any time there's a protest, we now have students taking advantage of that protest and walking out of class. Now you and I both know that today's students are walking out of class because they want an excuse. He doesn't seem to ever realize once he's turned the camera on that that the behavior that he is 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 partaking in here is bizarre to do when one is presenting any sort of subject. Like like the closest I can think of and this is just a a, a pass it's not me being being mean to this person but but sticks and hammer with the leather jacket and no shirt. Like you've got to realize that upon visual inspection, that it doesn't matter what you're saying, that a good percentage of people are just going to go, what is up with this fucking lunatic? Most of them don't really know. Did you just smell your fingers after you played with your eye? Is that what that was? Let's, let's go back. Now you and I both know that today's students are walking out of class because they uh -huh. want an excuse. Most of them don't really know. Yeah, you just you just had to see if you got some gunk on that uh, from from a, uh, an, a a nasal inspection. Is that what that was? Holy shit! Know enough about the issues involved. They're just making a scene. As a large group of students had gathered at Fifth and Federal yesterday by the ball fields. We were told, five of us, to line up our buses in the parking lot and be on standby for when they were done, because... Oh yeah, mind you, this gentleman is a bus driver. Uh, hello. I hope you're doing well. Hello fr from Russia with love. Excellent. Glad you could join. We now, when these events happen, because of safety and because they're students, we provide transportation. And I admit, part of me is like, isn't this great? They can walk out of class and we're going to provide them transportation to take them back to their school if they want it. Which basically, to me, <clears throat> I understand... Oh, he wears a shirt sometimes. ...the position of our job. That oh, and while we're on that subject, just to be fair to this gentleman, uh, in his archives, he quite regularly does that himself. Where he'll, he'll kind of sit on his porch a bit, shirtless with a big key necklace this is so there's there's some there's some patterns i'm noticing uh, but you know we are doing it for safety to get these kids off of the streets but i have a philosophy once they walk out of school they're outside the safety of the school you want to protest you want to do that you're on your own but 
we live in a society that coddles and enables. So... <clears throat> To be fair, what we live in is a litigious society. I stood outside my boss. It was literally 95%. Now, how much longer do you think he can stay on topic? This is only a 15 minute video. I didn't choose one of his really intentionally rambly ones. Uh, so, I, I have to know, do you think he stays on subject for the full 15? Or at what point does it devolve into petty disputes he has? And Hispanic. And as they were done, I'm pleasant. I always told you my passengers are my passengers. Regardless of their beliefs, I treat them as precious cargo. Stand outside the door with high school girls with half shirts. Oh, already we're there. Already we've devolved from the gun control debate to his fetishization of high school girls. Already. I made a comment not, not 10 seconds ago, and I was just joking. And already, see my, he knows, Germs knows my passengers, quote unquote, immediately knows. Germs is watching and just goes, don't worry, it's about to fucking come off the rails. But how do we- precious cargo. Stand outside the door with high school girls with half shirts. Hot. Tata showing, cleavage showing. Them, them high school girls tempting me with they titties. You know how it is. You know how it is for a male bus driver out here in the streets. And I said, hello, how are you today? <clears throat> 50% of them would not look me in the eye and smile and say hello. <laughs> uh, breaking news. Teenage girls are bitchy. <clears throat> Others just looked at each other with a sheepish, stupid look like, oh my gosh, I had got my hair cut, I had my army camo pants on, my chain, and I thought, here you're protesting the NRA and I probably look like somebody who would support guns. But whatever. Uh, anybody? Anybody in the audience? Does... Does this look to you immediately like you're like, oh, obviously a gun supporter. Is that, is that what your first instinct is when you see this man? Do you go, clearly a gun guy? Or do you go, maybe I'll get the fuck away from this dude? Is it, is it not even a concern or a consideration whether or not this is a gun guy or not? Does anyone think, think of that? I thought you can't even be nice to me. Now a couple of them were. The teachers that were- Let me guess. Pacific. These were mostly white girls. Were part of this were said thank you for the ride. That was a very good bus ride. What? And Hold up. Has anyone ever done that? And complimented their bus driver when they left? Like thank you. That was an amazing bus ride. You you're the best. Thank you. Is that a thing? And more and more, there are people that I work with in transportation that are looking me in the eye and say. <clears throat> <laughs> so he still snorts constantly and he still constantly clears his throat and I'm a smoker and I'll stream for hours and try and go without fucking clearing my throat or snorting it's it's not that hard you should be able to maybe keep it down to three or four in in a in a 15 minute video but public education isn't doing any good not here that in Denver it's become daycare the parents are happy because their kids are in school all day. And I've told you before, we're teaching them liberal, socialistic, gobbledygook. <laughs> Excellent. But anymore, it seems that it really is become daycare. Well, this isn't a groundbreaking observation. You got kids that are never going to learn, never going to grow. They just go in there and act like crazies all day. They get on the bus and act like crazies. And the parents get a break. Has anyone ever thought, like, to themselves, what is my bus driver when you were in school like, like, when they're not driving the bus? Did any of you ever expect it would be this? Was there anyone in the audience that even considered, like, oh, my bus driver clearly goes home and rants about YouTube videos about, uh, students walking out about guns and also titties? Do you think that was an option? But yesterday was National Walkout Day. And I don't want to say all students. I'm sure that there- Hashtag not all. There are mature students that, whatever reason, they have their view, they have their way of looking at things. But their answers are so rose-colored glasses. Ban all guns. And while we're standing there, there's police all the way around. I'm standing next to a contingency of officers out of their cars several on their mountain bikes <clears throat> Denver sounds nice they have mountain bike police 
Denver Public School Security, and a suburban goes down Federal Boulevard, and I hear this white guy stick his head out the back window and yell, Go back to effing school, kids! And I couldn't help but think, Yeah. <laughs> There is one thing you've got to grant this gentleman. He is genuine. But the problem is, is the school doing any good? The school seems to be fostering this. <clears throat> take part of the American process. Peaceful protest. Get rid of the NRA. Ban guns. They were doing this in protest to the... Does he know? 17 people killed in the Florida school tragedy just recently. Did he lean forward and read that off his screen? Excellent. The ironic thing that none of these high school students want to face is, especially this group of Here girls, we go. Like, Here we go. Okay, good. Now we get to the good shit. I can guarantee you that all of them have gotten in fistfights at one time or another. That is very big in the Latina the oh, Hispanic here we go. community is to go at it. Oh, you know these bitches be fighting, especially those Spanish bitches, man. You know, you know how they are, all fiery and shit. Fist to fist, <clears throat> hair pulling, biting, face in the cement, the whole thing. Okay, now we're just getting into your fantasies, Pacific. Now we've devolved directly into your masturbatory fantasies. That's what we are now. They're vicious, and I sit there and go, "You don't support gun violence, but have you guys been involved in fighting?" And the answer with most of them is yes. I, I listened to my coworkers. Many of them were in fights all their days in school. And I couldn't help but think that, <clears throat> you know, we're protesting guns. But you're not looking at the last name of this kid. <clears throat> oh, boy. In Florida, a Spanish last name, Cruz. Hmm? A Spanish last name, Cruz, so clearly. Now, I don't know what his ethnicity is. You're not looking at the fact that your own classmates could be a danger to you. You're not looking at the fact that you ban guns, then what? I think that a lot of these students today are very ignorant of the real issues and what's really going on. And people talk about people waving a gun around and that that's the problem. Nobody bothers to look at the statistics that millions and millions of Americans have not just a gun, but many guns. <clears throat> I have to... Damn it! Alright, we have to find one where he completely goes off the fucking rails before the five minute mark. Let's... Princess Bitch Syndrome. We actually watched part of this on... Fair, on the I know tube. that there's parents out there that if they saw their daughter wearing that, they'd say, you're not going to the house on Yeah, here's the, here's the good shit. What do you think the messages you're sending when you're dressed like that? A nice rack. All charged with. Here we go. Sexual harassment. Yeah. I would never look her in the eye and say, "Well, yeah, I'm struggling." You're as big as me. You're a woman. You're a woman in a woman's body, but your mind is way down here in immaturityville. Mind you, he's talking about one of his 15-year-old students, I think. <laughs> And I'm seeing... Maybe 17. A nice rack. Seeing them titties, girl. And I say to her, oh, do they have a dress code here? Trying to be the professional. No. Uh-huh. And I'm in an awkward position when everything fatherly in me wants to say, you know, young lady, you're a very attractive girl, you know that. Nothing about this is fatherly, Pacific. This isn't the kind of thing that a father says. This is the kind of shit that the uncle that the parents don't let babysit says. You know that, right? That's, this is more... This is for sure more don't let this uncle babysit talk than it is dad talk. All the guys on this bus know that. We all looking, girl. You know what you're doing. You're in seventh grade. <clears throat> eighth grade. Okay. It's worse than I thought. I'm sorry. 7th or 8th grade, that's, that's middle school, right? That's not, no, that's not high school at all. That's, uh, okay. What do you think 
the messages you're sending when you're dressed like that. Is this constructive to a curriculum academic environment? And then he goes and eats because he still does that on stream too. The public schools that don't have dress codes, girls come out in shirts with their belly showing, <clears throat> sleeveless. The temptation everywhere! Cleavage. I cannot tell you how many times teenage girls have gotten on my bus with no bras. <laughs> <laughs> Girls Woo. who've had nipple slips. Sick. And I'm just thinking. Yo, show me them titties, seventh grade girls. Who? Do you think he runs that pedo channel as well? Let's these women go out of the house like that. Now, to be fair, I know that there's parents out there that if they saw their daughter wearing that, they'd say, You're not going to the house on a dress like that. But the girls are clever. Mm-hmm. They're clever. He knows. He watches them. While they're waiting for the bus. He knows. As the bus driver watch, he'll explain it. They step in the bushes. They slip one shirt off. Slip the other shirt off. And they can do it without anybody seeing a thing. And they get on the bus dressed like a hoochie nanny. Dressed like a hoochie nanny. <clears throat> Facebook, social media is littered with teenage girls posing. He knows. He goes on that Facebook. He looks at them, them, uh, them teenage girls' posings. This is his main concern. You gotta realize that. You've really gotta understand. This shit keeps him up at night. Like... Sexting. Sending picture after picture. Is this the one where... Yes. Okay, but is this the one where he talks about meeting that teenage girl's father? Dullahan. Howard Dare is right on. We've manufactured whores and it starts very young. And I'm going to say something very blunt here. Oh, God. The Men rest are of the called perverts. Men, adults. For, for noticing. And I have a question for teenage girls. Do you, <clears throat> forget about maturity level for a minute. Yeah. You're advertising your hardware. Do you think that I at 52 or somebody at 65 or somebody at 35 is going to look at you and go... Get behind me, thought! No, he wants to suck them 15-year-old titty. What the problem is? What, you think he's a pervert for that? You you think he's a pervert for wanting to suck them 15-year-old titties at 52, huh? You think he's the bad guy? Maybe don't show them 15-year-old titties and, and then he won't be wanting to get up in them. She's under 18. She's not attractive. I'm not moved by that. Are you serious? You have to understand the way men are wa Are you serious? I want to throw it in, girl. Don't you understand? I mean, and really, it's your fault, so... It's not about maturity. It's not about whether you actually have some quality to your life where you would offer a good dating relationship with somebody a whole lot older than you. Nah, girl. I just want to throw it in. That's not even on the table. Men are side-oriented. Men are very side-oriented, and you're showing something that... Just because you're in a 15, 16 year old body. See? He knows. You look like a 20 something year old woman. And I want to throw it in, girl. Let's yeah, see you. We're going to notice it. This man handles children. This man drives a bus. This man drives a bus. Don't fucking forget that as you witness this. He's talking about people he has under his control on a regular basis. He drives a bus. Hey. And men are told, you can't touch them, you can't do this to them. That's fucked up, right? And believe me, <clears throat> if a man does, his life is over. Registered sex offender, jail time, removed that's, from his position, whatever it is. And that's fucked up. Just slipping on one temptation, just throwing it in one of them teenagers in the back of the bus, and boom, life over. Bam, like that. It will destroy him. On the lighter side of things, on a more positive note, if you're a lesbian oh. adult woman and you take advantage of a 14-year-old girl and have sex with her, you don't get to be registered on a sex offender list. I don't, I don't know that that's accurate. I mean, I'm sure there have been cases of that, but I'm, I'm not sold that's 100% accurate. Because lesbian women have more rights than a heterosexual man of the same age. That 
The lesbians have all the rights. That's a true story, by the way. In America, I can't remember what state it was in. A 19-year-old girl who had graduated had sexual relations with a 14-year-old girl. Oh, well, that... And sir, they... sir, Pacific, I for sure know people in real life, just adult males that were 19 and fucking 15 and 14 year olds and were let off because they had previous relationships or with, within a certain time period. It's not... They were in love. No jail time. Was not a registered sex offender. And I'm like, isn't that interesting? Which is proof that the American system favors female, feministic, lesbian, anti male stuff, but if a man, a 19-year-old man... <clears throat> you see? Irreconcilable proof. With consent. Had sex with a 14-year-old. <clears throat> he could be put away. A registered sex offender for life. The age difference? Five years. If she is 35 and he's 40, Nobody cares. These are some deep observations we're getting here. There's this little magic thing. 18. What is interesting about the whole princess syndrome, though, is the Democrats and the liberals didn't pull their heads clearly out of their butt <laughs> when they came up with this one. That in Colorado, in many states, a man of any age uh -huh. could be involved with a 17-year-old consensually. Uh-huh. As long as that man is not in a position of trust. School teacher, bus driver. See, he feels denied. Yeah, who hurt you? Dullahan, is this the video where he talks about uh, the guy's dad? Or the girl's dad that let him date her? Is that earlier in the video? Or is it much later in the video and we didn't skip till much later? Do you recall? Do you have any recollection of whether or not that's this video? Because I for sure want to get to that part. Without a shadow of a doubt, I want to get to that one. Uh, I think it's later. Eat. Okay. Uh, For interest in me. Oh, here we go. Already there. When I was. Here we go. Yeah, let's just. <laughs> there we go. And then when they get mad at him. That's that what it is. Okay, so he rolls that into it. There we go. So yeah, well, well as soon as he's this. done here. He all touched right. me. He did this. He removed my bra. He felt me up. He did the bad things to me. He did the bad things, Daddy. <laughs> When I was 27 years old, in Duluth... Here we go. 27, right? I dated a girl who was a month away from 18. Okay. It was a girl who showed an interest in me, and I looked her right in the eye, and I said... Do your daddy your know, girl? know you have an interest in me? Yeah. Do your daddy know, girl? Oh, yeah. I've told my dad about you. In fact... My dad <clears throat> will drop me off at your apartment if you want me to come over and hang out. Neat. Cool. Neat. I met dad. We shook hands. He knew my age. That was in Duluth many years ago. So now you know where he gets his tastes, you see. When he was 27, uh, he apparently had a sick-ass consensual, consensual sex with a 17-year-old, so... <clears throat> In fact, the family even invited me on an outing to McGregor, Minnesota to meet other family relatives. It was legal. It was legal? I didn't know this at the time. I didn't know about the laws then, but I thought, man, I'm dating somebody under 18. So that didn't add to the relationship or anything, did it? I just didn't tell anybody. See, he had From a, a secret... Level. He had a secret baby girlfriend... Uh, that he didn't tell anyone about, and the dad approved, so everything was fine. She was working a job taking care of handicapped adults and did overnights at the group home, and she was ahead of the game. Yeah, she was, was ahead of the, the game, girl, girl. One white girl in my life that I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, that is, that is a thesis statement on, on his life. That was the onlyest white... Because now, he dates exclusively Southeast Asian women. You have to realize that. Like, that's... Uh, oh, fuck you. Uh, mm, okay, go here. Alright. Uh, 
you have to realize at this point that oh, his man. whole thing is look look western women uh white women the new white supremacy um what is the purpose of a woman uh, there's a lot about American women. Uh, there's a lot about that. There's a lot about white man stole the land from the natives, but that's a clickbait. Western women, not Asians, have age hangups. See? He's got a thing. He's got a whole thing about Asians now. Uh, and about how they're the right kind of women. So, this is the onlyest white that ever broke his heart, because he fucked up. Instead of, uh, I guess, all the other relationships that have ended in his life because they were fuck-ups, I guess. I listened to a Christian friend who told me I shouldn't be involved with her simply because she wasn't in the faith. Even yeah. though she went to church with me, was interested, was seeking, and me... And that's why he's now mad at religion and uh, Christianity. Me trying to do Dudley Do-Right broke it off. She was the best white girl I ever dated. We had not one argument, not one. She was the best white I ever knew. One fight. She was willing to go anywhere in America with me. See? I was stupid. Young and stupid. Well, you were 27. I think, I think that might be a little bit of a stretch to call you young per se. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all that we're going to do from Pacific Ocean Liner. I don't think that we're going to get a whole lot better than um, his admission of uh, damaging the best white he knew. Uh, and he fucked up his only white relationship, I guess, that was good. Um, I, I don't... I don't know. I can't believe he came back, frankly. Uh, I can't believe it took me so long to find out he was back. Um, as you see here. I mean, shit, months. We're talking two months. Hatred from the left. Uh, if anyone feels like it, uh, Pacific Bus in 2015, fuck, what is this? Fuck, it's like a, it's like a well, thing I can't stop. And guess what? I'm in my office. Just thought I is that his name? Did he just say his legal name? Is that what this is? Look at this, first and foremost, look at this. This is, have you ever seen those things where fucking, uh, the presidents are preparing for a speech and they look like they're robots that are about to be turned on? That kind of looks similar here. Can't, uh, can't argue with that. But yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what he's talking about. Well, hey, you're tuned in to Ramon Sawaya and guess- Is it Ramon Sawaya? Is that why he has a thing about Hispanic people? Is it a self-hatred thing? That's what? I'm in my office. His Just office. thought I'd show everybody my office. Check this out. This Everyone ready to get real, real depressed? This is called a transit. It's a flat front end school bus. And this is my seat. My executive captain's chair. So, it's the last day of school. I cleaned oh my. my bus all up. I'm going to give you the tour. I got it signed. So, do you think he wears those chains when the kids are around? Do you think that's a hello, fellow kids? Do you think that's what this is? And off is having met all the requirements for cleanliness because everybody around here knows that this captain keeps his ship clean. So, this is fun. This is this a dating ad? This is a Bluebird 71 passenger with a Cummins diesel, one of my favorite diesel engines. I'm going to show you the engine here in a minute, but check this out. That's the cockpit. Uh-huh. Indeed. It's a school bus. Uh-huh. And there's the back of the bus. Excellent, excellent. Um... Are you going to tell us a ghost story? You're giving us a good layout of your bus. You're going to... And this is why the kids like to sit here. Look how far up it is to the front of the bus. Yeah. Now, if you're a student who wants to hide, this is where you go. Because they figure the driver can't see. But... Oh, my God. That little black thing up there is a camera. And... Okay, that is fucking creepy as shit. There are a bunch of cameras and school buses now. And that's just okay, and everyone's just fine with that. Midway on the bus is the other set of cameras. 
and we've got one in the front and this has a good view of me yeah that's creepy as shit that's a lot of cameras it's like it's like little england in there and everybody in the front portion of the bus yeah that's smile that's creepy you're shit. on school bus camera excellent yeah this is fun let me show you the engine compartment okay that's enough uh we're gonna fucking play video games now uh i can't stand looking at his face anymore I just can't. I can't stand it. I can't fucking stand looking at his head anymore. Uh, that's usually how editing one of his videos goes, and this is why I drink usually when I look at Pacific Ocean Liner videos, because he makes my brain hurt. He makes my soul hurt, too, but uh, I'm not supposed to talk about that.